Hello everyone, I am Dr. Aditya Sai. Welcome to our channel of the Shoulder and Knee Clinic. So if you like our content, do share, like and subscribe. Now coming to the topic today. We are going to discuss about patellar instability or recurrent dislocation of your kneecap. So, this is a very common problem in adolescents between the age of 12 to 20. Typically, uh, young girls are involved. Now, what are the reasons for that and what is the treatment? So, typically, the normal arrangement is like this. So, this is the kneecap or the patella. This is your thigh bone or the distal femur. So, it has a groove here which you can see and this is shaped like a convex uh, object. So, normally they articulate with each other and things are in place. There are ligaments on the sides which provide stability to this arrangement. Now, why does it dislocate? So, dislocation is incited by an injury event. So, suppose somebody is playing badminton or basketball, suddenly they twist their knee somebody with a susceptible anatomy essentially has a dislocation of the kneecap which can become recurrent if the anatomy is susceptible. So when I talk about susceptible anatomy, what are the factors? One, some people have excess rotation of the hip bones. So if that is there, then this predisposes them to recurrent dislocation of the patella because in these scenarios, the leg is rotated inwards and then this kneecap is going more outwards this predisposes to a dislocation some people will not have this group so that's called a trochlear dysplasia so if this is flat again there will not be a place for this bone to articulate and it will dislocate out some people have just a pure traumatic cause where the ligament that stabilizes this kneecap here from the inside which is known as the MPFL or the medial patellofemoral ligament. So that is torn during any of the injury events which predisposes them to dislocation. Third thing is some people have abnormal knee configuration so knee rather than being straight is like this so that's called a knock knee. Very common in adolescent young girls so that is what predisposes them to a recurrent dislocation of the patella. In some individuals, again, this kneecap, the way it is inserted is more outward compared to inwards, which predisposes them to dislocation. So, there are a lot of factors which predispose an individual to a recurrent dislocation of the patella. So, treatment essentially depends on what is the underlying problem. Now, the first episode of uh, patella dislocation, generally it is managed non-surgically where a splint is applied and gradual physiotherapy is started and typically for three to four months contact sports or pivoting sports are avoided. However, in some individuals, it, there is a recurrence. So, treating the recurrence essentially depends on the underlying problem. So, a lot of investigations go into treating this problem. So, when you meet your sports specialist, uh, CT scan may be advised to assess the hip rotation. We may do a CT scan to assess the depth of the groove, whether it is flat or normal. An MRI needs to be done to assess if there is any associated cartilage injuries. Because if the kneecap keeps on dislocating outwards, there is rubbing between these two areas of cartilage and it can cause cartilage injuries. In the MRI also what is assessed is whether there is any tear of the medial patellofemoral ligament. Also on a CT or an MRI what is assessed is whether there is a lateral insertion of patella or an elevated TT by TG distance. So in addition to this a special X-ray known as a scanogram is done to assess the alignment of the leg. So when all these tests are done then you finally come to a conclusion what is the basic pathology. And unless the basic pathology is addressed, the problem is likely to recur. So, when we look at surgical treatment, since there are so many pathologies, surgical treatment also varies from person to person and depends on the underlying pathology. So, let's say that there is excessive femoral antiversion in that scenario. The portion 
of the femur distally, that is the thigh bone. Here we correct the antiversion, correct the alignment, and then the ligament is also repaired in addition to that, which is an open surgical procedure. If there is any associated cartilage injuries, cartilage injuries are also addressed during the same setting. If there is just a tear of the ligament, then through a minimally invasive surgery, the ligament is reconstructed. Mind you, that repairs from these ligaments don't work. We need to reconstruct the ligament to get the original tension and so that the healing is proper. If the leg alignment is incorrect, again through small open surgery, the leg alignment is corrected at the level of the femur bone. If there is an insertion of this kneecap more laterally, then a distal osteotomy or correction of this insertion is done where it is shifted from here to more inside or medially. This is augmented with reconstructing the ligament. So, there are multiple surgical options. And depending on which surgery is done, your recovery is also decided. But all in all, it's nothing major as such. And typically, the next day, majority of the individuals, regardless of the surgery, are able to bear weight if there is no cartilage injury. With progressive physiotherapy, generally, by around four months, individuals make a complete recovery and they are able to return to sports. So, the most important take-home point from this video is it's not just the ligament injury which is causing a recurrent dislocation of the kneecap. It's a multitude of problems which need to be assessed before deciding to undergo which surgery and to give you a long-term benefit out of the surgical procedure. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, do share, like and subscribe to our channel.